As the 70s roll in, stability around the world has never been as shaky. Interplanetary alliances join together to seek ideological supremacy across both planets. Cultural shifts are uprooting norms that have been in place for centuries. Technological shifts have been changing how the world itself functions. As these shifts occur, life continues in the seed bearer region, where a seemingly random group of people have come together to try and make sense of the nonsensical. This is Hazeltown Story. Hello, I'm Bob Nader. I am playing Ferris T. Tarot. Pronouns he, him. He is a TV host for a wildlife and a society show called Whole Wild World. It's not super popular yet, but he's trying to work on that. And that should be it. Hi, I'm Carnival. I'll be playing Elvis Graner. Pronouns she, they. An engineering student who has in adv- who has made a surveillance network by accident. I am, of course, Deathmaster780. I will be playing Bob B. Pronouns he, him. He's a local businessman who gets into some shady shit, maybe. And also, I'll be playing uh, Saskia, a dead soul trapped in a stone. Pronouns she, her. Rock spirit. I'm Torpetypus, and I'm here to Hazeltown contact these nuts, and I'll be playing Aravia, she, her, an immortal dumbass. Oh, I suppose y'all want to go meet this mystery person? Yeah. I'll go along with you. Here, here's the thing. I'm not feeling too good about this whole situation. I'm gonna ask Bobby what he's worried Mystery, about. Dealing with supernatural entities, mystery people we know nothing about. You get I don't used sit to it. right with me. If you would allow Bobby a couple hours, I want to do some research, find out about this man they want us to see. Okay, but if you go in with nothing, we're still going. Oh, I'm sure you would. Just indulge me this. Now, in the meantime, can one of you make me a couple copies of this here data? Keep the original for yourself. Oh, and if you can get a printout of the security footage that has uh, Mix Merrill on it, that would be quite helpful. Sure, Elmis says from the couch. Which, by the way, I have you feel... I, you are just Yamcha posing, I imagine, just on the couch. Yes, of course. <sighs> All right. So I guess in that case, uh, Bobby wants to take a visit to the car wash. Actually, no. He's making two stops. Stop All number right. one is to a dead drop, a consortium dead drop, which is a ma- mailbox in a suburb of the city. And he takes the first the copy that he had, put it in a manila envelope with a bullshit address on it and puts it in the mailbox. And then the second place he's going is uh, the record store where Merrill works. All right. He goes uh, in, look, looks so, around for Merrill. Just, just to also to clarify, uh, is there, while this is going on, uh, is there any other thing that someone wanted to do that was not going to uh, meet up with contact? I mean, Aravi is humoring him, so she's waiting at the moment. Okay. Probably playing cards for anyone who's willing. Mr. Snuffles. Dude, Mr. Snuffles has a mean poker face. Cannot tell what he's thinking. Alright. Especially because especially it's a Sasuke he's technically playing. Um, alright. Uh, so I guess in that case, okay, so you're at the record store uh, that uh, Meryl works. Um, yeah, Bo- Bobby looks around for Meryl. Uh, you, you find that they are in fact working. Just working as usual. Bobby puts on his smiles, starts walking in their direction, casually snatching one of the records off the shelf as he heads towards them. Uh, Meryl's just it, it, just in the middle of sorting records, like or just like keeping or keeping inventory of what's there. Uh, Bobby, does not pay well, mind, but yeah, go ahead. Bobby walks up to them and says, howdy, friend. They look up and it's like, uh, can, can I help you? Yes. I was wondering if you could help me find some more. He looks at the record he snatched. Sticks? They look up and is like, uh, I mean, yeah, did someone not sort of write? It should be, uh, kind of gets up and just points. It was like, yeah, the six records should be right there. It'll be under, um, I, God, what would it even, like, it, it's just, it, 
it'll be under like with all the other S's there. Uh, not really my uh, forte, unfortunately. So I don't know if I could help you with a particular album. Are you sure? Perhaps you could help show me over there where it's quiet and no one else is. They look up and it's like, um, Remember, Beryl knows who he is because she knows he's consortium. They know she's consortium. Okay. Um, right, right. Yeah. Uh, it'll come as like, oh, uh, all right. I'll, oh, oh, I'll, oh, yeah. Let's just, let's just get this over with. And just kind of goes over to where you're, it's like, goes over to like a less occupied area. All right. Once they get there, Bobby says, I wanted to thank you. Oh, for what specifically? For your assistance, of course. After I left the store, I got a meeting set up nice and prompt. Wasn't with who I was looking for, but still. Meeting set up how exactly? Why, at that Lucky's Tavern, out in Hazeltown, of course. Uh, They kind of just, like, kind of put, like, a hand in their, like, kind of, I was like, you know, it kind of looks a lot less conspicuous if you don't, you know, trash the or like go and break in before you do that. Kind of makes it a little questionable this for, you know, like to see the deep pass, you know, if they see that they're going to poke their nose in it. Oh, don't you worry. That's all resolved. So you I take it you had the you were at the meet. I take it that you actually had a meeting. Oh, yes, yeah, a meeting did occur. I wasn't able to attend it, unfortunately. But it seems a, a beginnings of a deal was struck. All right. Um, so I guess... Um, so, all right, what's the... Now, I guess, like... I'm just wondering, what is the consortium doing trying to get involved with, you know, us? This doesn't seem like exactly your neck of the woods now. Granted, I know you're trying to keep an eye on things, but this doesn't exactly well, seem like your work. Bobby smiles and says, Oh, I want the same thing I won the last time I was here. I want to work with you. All right. Um, they just kind of pause. It's like, all right. So now is it the consortium that wants to work with me or us? Or is it another group? Uh, the former, of course. If I was here for the others, I wouldn't hear, be here talking to you now, would I? Well, possibly. Now, what good is the consortium going to do for us? I know they normally don't exactly... I'm just... We both want the same thing. We want Cygnus and Orion out of this country. I mean, I suppose, but... That? Is that... Doesn't exactly seem like your lot's the kind that, you know, like... uh if you could, don't mind me saying, uh, not exactly the kind of get your hands personally type. Oh, you'd be surprised. But if you're wondering what we have to offer, it's access. After all, we both know that Orion and Cygnus, they're getting more powerful. They're getting into places where they shouldn't be. Politic, corporate world. Places that I'm guessing Libra doesn't quite have as much access to. I suppose, but what exactly are you getting at? What I'm saying is, if you work with us, we can help root them out of that area. For example, I know for a fact that Orion's trying to break into the tech industry, putting sylphs into androids. Such nasty business. Uh, you get a little bit of an eyebrow raise at that mention, oh, but... didn't know about that. Didn't know about that, did you? Well, he well... places a hand on his chest and says, We did. But what we don't know is the name of their company and who they're working with. If we were able to acquire that information, I suspect it'd be much easier to root them out. Well, more surprised that that is actually something that uh, would matter to you. And that's something that, not a phrase that I was expecting to kind of come out of a conversation uh, with your group. I didn't feel like that's something that you particularly were in the field of. But... Um, Access to information about, say, uh, any anyone of that ilk uh, could, in fact, be useful. Um, indeed. indeed it would. Uh, and, of course, we're not unwilling to get our hands dirty, if you know what I mean. 
in my finger gun. Well, more what I was kind of getting at earlier is you aren't the kind that I figured that if you did want to say they kind of make the, the finger guns motion back, get your hands dirty, that just seems a little bit of a roundabout way to kind of considering that if you're going to hire someone to, you know, get your hands dirty, it probably might actually be us. It just seems a little bit of a roundabout way of getting your own hands dirty when probably if you're hiring someone, it's probably going to be someone like us. Possibly. But look at it this other way. If we're not working with each other, we're just going to be getting each other's way. And why do that when we could simply pool our efforts and get Cygnus and Orion out of here that much faster? Well, that's certainly the case. But right now, I'm not the one with the... Uh, they just kind of do a slight flex. I am not exactly the one with the information. I have a more... I'm involved with uh, out of office, uh, out of office work, if you understand that. So while I understand why you might be trying to talk to me, that's not exactly not exactly the best person to talk to that. Talking to you because you clearly have a line to the people who do manage that kind of thing. Well, the last 24 hours or any indication. Well, I will say if you did, in fact, have the meeting, which judging by your verbiage, probably would be you either did or you were in line with someone who did, in fact. I feel like they should have given you something that actually has a much better line than I. So my Perhaps. advice right now is But to as just... I pointed out, I'm not here representing Reading Rainbow. Ah, I see. That is what... Hmm. Well, what I can say for this, I'm not against the idea of getting outside help, but uh, right now... Uh, the best way to help would be to maybe go with the group that did, in fact, have the meeting and go follow their lead and see that will probably get you much further on than, you know, just dealing with why why bother with the private when you can go to the corp when you can go to the general. Well, I imagine the scope of things you're going to be sending my compatriots after is not going to be the same thing, but still think it over. Run it up the chain, if you'd so kindly. I even have something here to sweeten the deal. And he takes out the second copy of the floppy disk. He, quite, he <laughs> whispers his next part and says, Your friends missed this when you were torched in that warehouse the other night. They take a look at it and it's like, All right, well. Bobby places the floppy disk on the underside of the sticks record he's holding and then hands them both to uh, Meryl. All right, well. In that case, I guess we'll see what happens. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. Uh, he he turns to go, but then stops and says, "Oh yeah, one more thing. I suppose a little bit of business for my friends. Uh, what was the name written on the card that Ravi uh, got? It was, in fact, uh, it was right now. You have two weeks tabs open. Uh, it was where is it? Um, I just." Uh, it is Rolf. Rolf Fowler. Rolf Fowler. What can you tell me about this person? I can just say, well, he's probably the person that you should be talking to instead of me, is yes, what I will what, say. Who is he? Well, uh, he is, like I said, why talk to the, why talk to the lower? When you can talk to the higher, he is the higher. Bobby just, he doesn't reply, just keep, just stands there and waits for a, a non-bullshit answer. I was like... I mean, I guess if you want it, want me to be a little bit more direct, he's he is essentially the captain of our Libra sect, since you have are now asking more specific questions. I meant more. What does he do for a living? But sure. Oh, uh, you know, we don't exactly talk about that kind of stuff to kind of, you know, just keep it on name basis. Um, don't exactly know what he does. Hmm. Well, all right, then. You have a good day, friend. Think about what I said. We could do great things together. And he leaves the store. All right. Once he's outside, he'll just call up Aravi and say, go do your thing. Fucking took you long enough. Mm-hmm. And he hangs up. taking my cash. All right. Now that that's done with, um, what exactly is the... So I take it that 
Aravia, you and Ferris are going to go over to the address, unless anyone else wants to come. Saskia. Nah, I'm kind. Of... Saskia, I'm Saskia, yeah. I'm. I'll... Elvis is going to just be ch- sit- sitting it out. So there were you had two other characters two other there. Was Claudia, True. Virtue, want to go? Yeah, do I not take Virtue? Wear the sword on your back. Why not? Two wheeled relics. Yeah. <laughs> One more time, where are we head? Uh, you are heading to the home of. Are you taking? You're heading to a. Well, first off, you got a phone number. Of, oh, I thought we got an address too. You probably also got an address, but you do, do also have a to, phone number. We want to call that phone number too, at least. Yeah, we should. Uh, I'll, I'll call them. I'm gonna dial uh, them up. All right. Uh, you dial the phone number, and after a while, um, you get a. Uh, you get it. it Rings for a little bit, and you get a a like basically you hear someone answer the phone with a uh it basically does a, a hello hi who is this I'm here to talk to you about your car's extended warranty no I, I'm a Ravia we we have mutual friends who might have told you of me mutual friends um friends in funny places is this on speakerphone God no. Uh, I have plenty of friends in weird spaces. You might need to be a little bit more specific. Look, a bartender sent me your way. A a bartender? About information. Arthur. Whispered Saskia. Yeah, Arthur. All right. Uh, do you mind giving me your address? Uh, yeah, why not? Uh, just... I take it you give the address. Yeah, I'm just gonna just fair warning, it is a very official looking building, which it technically is. Don't don't be don't worry about it. I know, I'm just verifying things. Alright. So I take it you had your meeting. Yeah, yeah. Alright. Well, uh in that case, uh do you uh I take it you might wanna do you wanna hear, I guess, our side of the uh, of what exactly they kind of might have mentioned? Uh, I'd like to hear it in person, honestly. All right. Well, uh, that address you gave that you probably should have gotten. Um, we did, but it, you know, it's 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 rude to not call. Well, let's just say, uh, come visit me this afternoon, and I will go ahead and uh, explain some things. You got it. They hang up. <laughs> They're coming to us. We're going to them. Oh, uh, hey, excellent. this sounds, oh, hey, this sounds fun. Take me, take me. Uh, I mean, yeah, you've been, sure, yeah, finally got a day off from your job. I take it, were you being virtue in that case? Yeah, yeah. it was virtue, but, but yeah, job, what do you mean job? You know, of sitting around. Oh, like you're one to talk. Look, I am busy all the time. At this point, virtue's gonna materialize, walk over walk over, dematerialize, and just magnetize to back, like, a video game weapon. Oh, okay. Congratulations, well, you are now a street samurai. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I use my fists and chairs. You are now a street samurai. <laughs> street samurai with a pug dog familiar. Shit, are there leash laws here in the Steinwald? Uh, yes, it, there probably are. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna leash the pug, and then we're going for a walk. I mean, obviously, this right. is how I deal with my fucking enchanted item problem. All right, let's let's go ahead and make this like okay. It's a few hours later. Uh, the address is for a uh, it's a residential di- uh, district. Um, that's in like it's a apartment. Uh, it is in a like it, it is place. It is a definitely a apartment complex that has been kind of denoted for people who are either like just starting at like it is for people who are like just starting out as like it is for not a whole like it is for like just like one or two people. Um, New it is like starting out like. Like it, you like it is an entry level, like an entry level apartment. Yeah, so thing. like people just people going to school and shit. It's it's not a particularly fancy place, but it is very it's good enough. Yeah, 
he gets the job done. Yes. Um, the apartment, uh, like, it's about base level as you can get. Uh, you kind of, I it just, it almost looks like the inside of like a inside of like a Holiday Inn, like that level of like very basic, um, but not exactly like run down. But it, it just simple. seems it's simple, small, simple, e- economical, so to speak. It's a very kind way of putting it. Um, so I think so it you you ring the doorbell and uh, you it, like um, you like you knock on the door or ring the doorbell, whichever one you choose, you decide. Um, and you like when you open, like, when do you see the door open? Um, outside, or, like, uh, you see that instead, like, a uh, very tall, very, like, tell someone that is, like, if you were kind of expecting someone to be, let's say, an enforcer, they end up, open, like, they are very, like, not exactly, like, jacked, but they are definitely, they definitely nope. work out a lot. Um a relatively tall uh, black tiger man uh, with long white hair kind of opens the door and kind of sternly looks at you and just kind of looks to see, uh, looking for multiple, like they're just kind of looking to see what your group would be. And as they kind of look, <laughs> you just see, they just see you with a sword on your back, holding a pug, like walking a pug. I think Ferris is there too. And Ferris, yes, Ferris is here too. As well, but yes, uh, I'm I'm currently cradling the pug. Uh, just kind of looks at you and is like, "Yeah, this is the kind of people that I'd expect." Uh, <laughs> at this point, Virtue's gonna yell, "What are you looking at?" <laughs> uh, uh, and the person at the door just kind of gives you the, um, just kind of like gives you like the, "All right, you're good." Uh, and you you see them what or like go like turn back into the into the apartment is like. They're good. And uh, just kind of very tersely turns back to you and just says, come on in. I mean, why not? I guess me and Ferris are going to head in. Me holding a pug with the sword on my back. You're the one, you're the one driving this ship, so. Yeah. So the two of you go in and in the living room, like the first room that you get into is the living room. And on the living room, there is a... Um, you kind of just take a look and you see a few people in the room. You see, uh, the other, like the person who, the tiger man who walked in or like opened the door, uh, also went to go sit back down. Uh, cause it's not like it's a large room. Uh, as you kind of do a survey of the room, you see, uh, that there are four people in the room right now. Uh, you see the, Sitting next to like the the Tiger Man went to go sit down on like a larger couch. Uh, the other person on the other side of the couch, uh, you can tell that it looks like they are is the second set of a pair of twins. That actually is what looks to be the Tiger Man's twin. Uh, has more another muscular uh, man with like a this. They have like more of a. Long, they are also have longer hair, but it's more done in a ponytail. Oh, uh, that's a little shorter. I like uh, the phrase "tiger twins." Hi, I'm back. Um, can I recap the last five minutes? I'm sorry. Yeah. So, r- right now, as you get into the building, uh, you see that there are a pair of, well, a pair of tiger twins that are both muscular. Um, that are, let's just say, they're probably like wearing jeans and tank top, so you can see that they are, in fact, you can tell, like, oh. You can tell what their their job in this organization is, uh, which is also not held by the fact that the other person that is sitting probably in like another chair in this set, uh, who is a equally muscular horseman, who is also looking at you quite weird. There is like somewhat like, OK, this is I, I guess this is what I'd expect. Uh, the other like the not stern one or the the one of the Tiger Twins that didn't answer the door. Um, like has a much more of like a smile on his face and is kind of more amused, but not like 
like, okay, this is going to be interesting way. Uh, but the other person uh, that's kind of sitting, you can kind of tell just by the posture that they're probably, this is their apartment. Uh, they're probably like sitting in like, like the, the, like the recliner, like the, the person who owns the house chair uh, is a slightly more uh, lean uh, hyena man. And when he kind of takes a look at you, he just kind of goes, yeah, this is kind of roughly what I expect. Uh, I take it that you uh, and kind of looks over to Ravi. He's like, I take it that you're the one who called me. What do you mean? This is what you expect. Sorry, I've got a dog with me. Well, <laughs> uh, well, I should probably. It's more the fact that, you know, I was not, you know, when I was a told that I was that there would be uh, potentially another group of people to help us out. I wasn't quite expecting. I was expecting more, you know, like someone who kind of waltz, waltzed into here. Uh, not exactly someone carrying relics with them out in the open. I will have you know this is a sword and a dog. Morph. I see that, but also we both know what we have gotten ourselves into. We it you don't need to beat around the bush. Yeah, mind if I put the dog down? He's very well behaved. Oh, bizarrely well behaved. Uh, go ahead. Ravia sets the dog down and then tosses the sword to the floor. Uh, Mr. Snuffles will go over and sniff the hyena man. Ferris can ask when we get a dog because he was not there for that. That's, you that's sure. just, yeah, it's Saskia's. Saskia's familiar. Let's familiar. Say. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Mr. Snuffles. He's a cute little pug with sunglasses. Demonic looking pug, but he is cute. Yeah. And has sunglasses. Yes. Uh, also, also, just a quick thing uh, using extra planner awareness. Is there anything supernatural about any of these people or nope. the apartment? Mm. Also, once All again, right. Carnival, I, I threw Virtue to the floor. Oi. <laughs> At this point, Virtue's going to rematerialize the full body form and like, Oi! Hey! Hey! I, was, I wasn't going to have you do that on my back. Fair enough. Also, hello. Uh, hello there. Uh, so, it, it basically the person, like, uh, the hiding man just kind of goes over and goes to pet Mr. Snuffles. Uh, why don't I just go ahead, uh, well, let me introduce myself. Or at least, so we can at least not get on at least a, at least a first name basis. Uh, you probably know my name. My name is Rolf. Uh, and he kind of, with the other hand, gestures towards the group. We are Libra. Uh, we are uh, one of the multiple Libra sects here. Um, I believe that, uh, yeah. So as far as, I was not able to get a whole lot of information uh, from your, from Arthur, from you. Yeah, he's but, good at that. Well, I do... What he was able to tell me was that you have had... We have had, let's just say, common enemies in the past. Ah, uh, you also don't like the racists. Yeah, weird that. <laughs> Shocker, right? Uh, yes. Uh, we are currently trying to, um, help get them to, uh, decide to relocate to literally anywhere else. Uh, preferably, uh, yes. Why don't you just kill them? That's the simple solution. Well, yeah, I, was say, I thought you meant relocate a life. I, I mean, I didn't want to specifically say that, but that is, in fact, something that we are good at. Um, I mean, look, I'm not going to stop you. Hell, go for it. Well, that's why I feel like, um, I feel like it's not going to take much twisting of your arm that... I can just kind of get from what I've heard. If what I have heard from you about your group, from what we have, uh, let's say, what Arthur and their group has observed, uh, then you probably it's probably not going to take a whole lot of twisting of your arm to kind of get us to help out or get you to, say, help our cause. Probably not. I mean, I'm also guessing you're not friends with Orion either. Uh, let's just say not anyone on the Olympia side. No, not really. Okay, good. I, I might have had to bust some heads then. Well, then you, if you have past experience, that's probably pretty good. So, um, I guess in this case, what exactly, um, just so we can at least get, I, 
I've heard from secondhand what you've done, but why don't you kind of explain what your what what exactly have you done? I wish I knew. With, well, you said they said that you had some past experience. Uh, what Saskia. exactly? Yeah. Gun. Yeah. Nope. Uh oh. Uh, you cut out a little bit. I think DM's having problems. I said go ahead, Torpid. Oh, okay. No, I was saying go ahead. Oh. Uh, Saskia's voice will come in from Mr. Snuffle's direction and says, I've spent several years trying to dodge them. Terrible things could happen if I were to fall into their possession. Well, thankfully, you're attached to a pug at the moment. Uh, my job is to defend the realm from things that cause issues. So usually I just show up in a town, I, you, I showed up in a bunch of towns for a year, fought some weirdly themed monsters, and then moved on. Do they explode? Sometimes. Oh, I think I heard about that. So Ferris, figured... what is your experience? Oh, uh, you were asking Rolf? Uh, no, no, Ferris. Oh. Can you repeat the question one more time, please? What are your experience with the cults? Well, I will mention that I'm glad you asked, because I actually have a documentary I've been working on that should be... Is it out, or will it be out soon, or how far is it coming along? Uh, I take it you're still working on it. Okay, in yeah. Production. Yeah, I will mention that I have a documentary in production. Probably focusing more on... Cygnus is the bad one, correct? Yes. Uh, they're yeah. pretty much... Yes, they... White supremacists. Yeah, there's a lot of bad ones, but they are probably one of the worst. Probably going to focus on them, then. You know, like, call them the public danger and all that. You know, get public awareness out there. He just kind of looks, and Rolf just kind of like, all right. So, and I personally, I've dealt with Orion, unfortunately, and Staravia just starts to see a little bit. They're also dealt with Cygnus. Uh, knocked a few of their heads, too. Well, okay. Um, well, that's good, because that's probably what we're going to need you to do. Um, so let's... I don't... Well, I figure right now we're just kind of getting to know each other. So why don't I just have to go ahead and uh, introduce um, introduce our crew here. Uh, I take it that you, I, I have heard that you have um, gotten familiar with Meryl. Uh, they're working, so they're not here right now, but I was able to gr grab the other crew. Uh, kind of signals to the two tigers on the couch. These here, uh, Lycus and Ravi, uh, they, uh, they actually came here, they moved, uh, immigrant from uh, Moon Beacon, actually. Uh, they have some experience actually dealing with these people. And, uh, yeah, so these are uh, some of our good, uh, say, very good at also some of the things that you'll be doing. Uh, I was going to say, just so you know, um, Ravi, the one with the long hair, and Lycus, the one with uh, the ponytail. Uh, from what you can gather, Ravi is much more stern. Lycus is a little bit more friendlier. Uh, and yeah, they are a twin. They used to actually be in a, in some sort of, I keep on forgetting what exactly they called it, but, uh, they, some sort of like, there was, they were essentially some sort of mercenary thing. They, they don't really talk about that. It kind of looks at the size like they don't really talk about that much, but yeah, they used to be, uh, soldiers fighting in, uh, you know, the complex over there. General rule of thumb. If a mercenary is proud of their work, you don't want to be around them. Yeah, well... Uh, they're continuing the fight over here. Uh, and then over here is Gregor. Uh, he points to the host or the horse. Uh, not it just like it's like, yeah, he just, you know, uh, was doing some work over, you know, in Himmelheim, like over in that area where they're dealing mm -hmm. with a lot of sickness problems. Like, you know, got some real bad stuff coming over there. Uh, it's dealing over there and kind of now coming over here to. I guess continue the fight because they might have, you know, good thing that they're here and not there. And Gregor just kind of very like bunk person just kind of nods their head. So, yeah, uh, this is currently our group, at least the one like that has, you know, contact with Arthur. Um, I right now uh, just kind of came out of nowhere, so I don't really have we're. You know, kind of keeping an eye on things, but uh, we don't really have any specific, you know, job for you now. But we feel like we might have something shortly. So why don't you go ahead and, you know, uh, I guess I guess we should more formally ask uh, or say, 
Uh, I take it that, uh, are we good to call on you? Sure. Uh, quick question, though. Do you have any familiarity with the uh, the White Lion? The White Lion? Yeah. Uh, hmm. I, like, specifically, are you looking for a White Lion in particular? Head of the, 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 the cult. Head of a cult. Oh. Oh. White Lion head of... Oh, are you talking Fahrenheit? Yeah, uh, I'm looking for him. Good luck. That's we go from... way back. Well, it that's nice, but that's way farther up the chain that they're trying to keep that separate. Okay, I just know nice. that he is high up in our organization. I just don't know if you like if I could tell you anything. I would, but there's nothing that I know about the dude. He is very specifically trying to keep that down low. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Probably knows I'm looking for him at this point, too. I, You and a lot of other people. No, we, we go way, way back still. Uh, I figured I, it would be a good idea to ask anyway. All right. Well, uh, do you have any other questions? Anyone? Yeah, the warehouse you're supposed to go and kill, or do you, do you still not have that? Well, right now we're in the middle of trying to figure things out. We're still kind of in a reconic. We're still. We don't have any concrete information. We got something that probably might be coming sooner rather than later. But as of this second, no. Does it have to be a warehouse? I don't know. I just wanted to know. Do we have the location to go? You know, do the thing, crack skulls, yada yada yada. Yeah, but d- does it have to be a warehouse? Not really. Granted, I saw warehouses relatively as it got closer to the modern era, but, like, for the most part, not really. It was weird, oh, though. They kept happening. So only warehouses, nowhere else, eh? Quarries. But, like, yeah, that's an obvious spot to go fight fight for your battle. That's, like, a resource. Same way you would fight in a river. Can't, can't you just fight anywhere? I mean, yes. But you gotta remember, the, there's, important, there's an importance to this. There's a, there's, a, there's a performance to this. You gotta make, you gotta look good when you do this. I, I always you sp- look good. How else do you spread your legend? Uh, unfortunately, I don't think spreading my legend's a good thing. Uh, we agree to disagree there. I'm afraid I must agree with Aravi on that one. My legend is... Well, it's complicated. But there's partially the reason why I'm in my current state. Ferris, you're a showman, you understand? Oh, absolutely. I have been to this situation many times, trust me. I'm sorry, what were you saying, man? Uh, back in the day, our, na- our name used to mean quite a lot. It broke, opened many doors, and closed many doors that we would then be forced to kick open. Either way, yes, we're willing to help you. Sounds great. Uh, well, I guess in that case, um, you, I, like what I'm talking about, I got... So, the number I was able to call uh, should still be good, right? Yep. Well, how about this? Um, if I get a hold of something, uh, I can go. I'll go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and get in contact with you. So, no, no. and the address is always good too. Yep. Well, it's been nice chatting with you in your lovely apartment. Thank you. Now, uh, if you excuse us. Uh, I'm amazed have, all of you fit in here. It, you know what? Sometimes I'm surprised as well. Oh, okay. It's, it's just y'all are so big and it's so economical. Yes. Uh, as they go to leave, Saskia will actually, Mr. Snuffles will go over and paw at uh, Virtue's leg and Saskia will say, transform. We, it's not the fight yet. Oh, wait, the other one. All right. And pops back in the sword, magnetizes back to Ravia's back. Oh no. When in sword form, Mr. Snuffles will pick up the sword with his mouth. Uh, uh, okay. That's, sure. that's incredibly adorable, Mr. Snuffles, but I still need to carry you down the stairs. Oh. This is Mr. Snuffles with the sword in his mouth. Okay, okay. sure. Well, you saw what happened when <laughs> Virtue tried to ride on the back, so. Alright, so that's it. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, now that uh, now that you have uh, gone ahead and made contact, now all it is, all the all you, it's just time to play the waiting game.
Thank you for listening to Hazeltown Story. If you'd like to get updates on this show and many other shows hosted by me, Lola DePazlo, you can follow at Hazeltown Story on Twitter. And if you would like to get to know me or from a personal standpoint, you can follow my personal Twitter at Lola DePazlo. If you would like to watch this be recorded live, you can go to twitch.tv slash Lola DePazlo and follow the channel for notifications of when this show, as well as other shows like Retro Rank Rhapsody, are being recorded. If you would like to add this podcast to your podcatcher of choice, you can search for WLDP Hazeltown Radio and find us on most major podcatching search engines. Or you can manually add rss.hazeltown.life to your podcatcher. Thank you for listening, and I hope you come around for the next episode.